Welcome to Evacuation. Coming up, a new addition to the farm family. I'm going to feed a cow. Ooh, a baby cow. Face to face with the enemy. <laughs> and it's competition time at the Castle Farm Fit. Hey, can you fly? I reckon we're beating the girls by lots. At the start of the Second World War, city children under threat from bombing raids were evacuated to live with strangers in the countryside. Now we've taken a group of modern city boys and girls back to the 1940s to experience life as an evacuee. They've been on the farm for 10 days and have so far found their new wartime life a complete culture shock. Supposedly washing's a girl's job. What a load of rubbish. They have grappled with gas masks, Face the fury of the local air raid warden. At the moment, you are signalling to enemy aircraft. And even built their own bomb-proof shelter. But it wasn't just the bombing raids that had the country gripped with fear during the war. By the summer of 1940, Hitler had swept through Europe and Britain fell under real threat of an enemy invasion. With the army fighting abroad, men too old or unfit to go to war were recruited to protect the mainland from a potential German attack. One and a half million men volunteered, and they became known as the Home Guard. To make sure that our evacuees know exactly what to do should the enemy turn up unexpectedly, they're having a visit from Private Picard. I am here because we are now in the front line. We're a little bit from the coast. The chances are they will drop spies in in this area, first of all. The enemy would have sent spies to gather intelligence before launching an attack. The whole nation was gripped with paranoia and saw potential spies everywhere. Who was that? If the evacuees were to see a spy, it's vital they're able to memorise and pass on detailed information about the enemy's position to the home guard. So let's see how good you are at remembering things. Private Picard has set up a game of Chinese whispers to test these skills. There are 20 Germans and eight tanks, two and a half miles southeast of Swanton Morley. 20 Germans mm. and eight tanks, mm. two and a half miles from mm. Swanton Morley. There, somewhere. Ooh, okay. that's not a very good start. 20 Germans. Uh, two and a half miles, and he says swans and something. What? Swans and something? Two and a half miles, and um, swan is something. That's what she said. Swan and Yeah, that's where we are. Thank goodness Joanna is on the ball. Twenty Germans, eight tanks, two and a half miles. Is it? Swan. Swan. No, there was something else as well. She said. Or maybe not. What on earth will Private Picard think? 20 miles, eight tanks, two and a half miles, Swanton Marley. 20 miles. 20 miles and two and a half miles? Oh, 20 Germans, sorry, I meant. Well, I think I might as well just give up. So if we form up there, because we always want to face the enemy. Private Picard wants to see if the children would be any good at scaring the enemy. To avoid injuries, the evacuees are using broom handles instead of bayonets. Squad! On guard! Ah! And what do I want to see before you go? Aggressive. Aggressiveness. The first task is mastering the art of pulling scary faces. That's it. I want to see aggression. Growl! <laughs> <laughs> If he, all he's got to do is scream at you, we're not going to win, are we? <laughs> That's it. Grimaces at the ready. It's time to charge the enemy. Squad! On guard! Oh, there, Charlie. That was on guard, not charge. Get back here! What did I tell you? <laughs> Squad! On guard! Charge! That's it. 
In, twist, out! Yes! Look, <laughs> <laughs> on God! Never mind the Nazi Germans. I wouldn't like to face this lot on the battlefield. I just have a lot of anger inside me that needs to be let out. <laughs> That's why I did the whole aggressive rah thing. Plus it was really good fun. I think I had an aggressive first. Now I want you to walk round walk round the corner here. It's time to put their scary faces behind them, as the evacuees are about to be introduced to a new member of the farm family, an orphaned calf. Here, have a look. In order to look after this calf, children, we've got to mix up milk, uh, milk every morning and every evening and, get, and give it to it in a bottle. Now, this is going to be a job, a, a regular job for two people every day. Tonight, I want you, Chelsea, and you, young Charlie. I want you two now to come with me up to the kitchen, and we will we will mix some milk. The rest of you can stay here and look 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 at the calf. This little calf will have to be hand reared, something our city boys and girls have never experienced. I'm really really excited because I'm going to feed the cow. Ooh, a baby cow, going to milk it. <laughs> Chelsea and Charlie will have to bottle feed the calf with the specially made up milk. That's nice and warm. Nice and warm, not too hot? No, not too hot, it's nice and warm. There we go. Right. His name is Jack. It's Jack, it's Jack the cow. Jack, he's called Jack. He's called Jack. Can we call him Oscar? Actually. Yeah, Oscar. Jack has been abandoned by his mother. It's now up to Charlie and Chelsea to look after him, and it's a big responsibility. Not up his nose, Charlie. That little cow in there was fantastic. I loved every minute of it. I got to stroke it, I got to play with it, and I also got to feed it and give it some milk. I would like to take him home, but I don't think Mum or Dad would be very happy. <laughs> now Jack the calf's fed, the evacuees can have their lunch. Today is no ordinary lunch time for our evacuees, because Auntie Sue is about to make an announcement. This year, I've been honoured to hold the annual fete and it's going to take place tomorrow on the front lawn. We need to do everything we can to raise money tomorrow for the war effort. By tomorrow, the front lawn here will be heaving with fiat action. There'll be everything from cake stalls to welly wanging. And I'd better get practising. Here we go. Ooh, I think I can do better than that. Auntie Sue has decided to introduce a competitive element to the FIT fundraising. It's going to be boys v girls to see who can raise the most money for the troops. Okay, you take the boys, girls, you're coming with me and I'll send Luke on to you. Come on then. There's going to be a competition between the boys and the girls and I think the boys might win, but if we do win, we're going to be very pleased and I reckon the girls are going to be disappointed. I think the girls are going to be totally much better than the boys because everybody likes cake. The girls believe a cake stall is the best way to raise money and beat the boys. That is just <laughs> During the war, fundraising events happened all over the country to raise money for the troops and keep up morale for those at home. You can take your bowls and you can go and sit down next door and eat them, but please don't be sick. I'm going to lick the stall for you. <laughs> Mmm, butter icing, the best bit about baking. While the girls enjoy the fruits of their labour, Mr Patrick has invented a rather unusual way for the boys to rake in the pennies. Three. Right. Somebody pays a penny, and when they pull the arm like that, you've got to go, like that, show me how you go like that. You've got to do it in time together. One, two, three, four, stop. And then you've got a sack down here. You've got to put your hand in the sack and pull something out the sack and hold it up. Now, if you get three same things, they win. 
So his mysterious plan involves sacks, vegetables and tins of food. It's a human fruit machine. The boys need to get their act together if they want to make any money. Never mind win the competition. Ready? Oh, that's tons and tons of cream. That's a bit much. Oh, that is going to be gorgeous. Touch the top. I feel like it's oh, brilliant. Yay! I think that the girls going to win because them, them cakes look tasty. So, they have no chance. Natalie may be pleased with her efforts, but will the cakes pass the ultimate taste test? Good afternoon, Michelle. How are you? It's up to their much-feared teacher, Miss Young, to decide whether their efforts are good enough to be sold at the fete. I'll take the one from the top and have it with my tea. Lovely. Look carefully. Up to the mouth and in. Yours, you say? Yes, Miss Yolk. Be very proud of yourself. Thank you, Miss Yolk. Absolutely delicious. With such a spread of cakes like that, I don't see how you can't win hands down. Thank you, Miss Yolk. What a relief. High praise indeed from their teacher. But it's a different story out in the yard. The boys are struggling to get their game right. Do it together, do it properly. One. Two, three. <laughs> you want to hold your arms more over like the others? Just like three seconds, maybe. One, two, three. One, two, three. Well done, that's a lot better. Finally, they seem to have cracked it. Their cakes are going to run out, but our energy ain't going to run out. So. We might just put soy sauce in the cake so nobody will buy them. <laughs> <laughs> That's an idea, isn't it? <laughs> they don't have toys, it's called the royal work. What a glorious day for the Castle Farm Fete. But unfortunately for our evacuees, there's a lot of dirty work to be done before the grand opening. Everybody's got to pull together this morning. It's a very important day. And I've I'm not going to be embarrassed in front of the people I know out of the village by having a messy house or a messy yard. We need the place neat and tidy, and it will be. And whoever doesn't pull their weight will not be going to the fete. You have to, like, brush all, like, the little bits of hay into the piles. Arch Skyver Harry thinks he's got it tough, but Josh is in big trouble. Uh, the piglets keep on chasing me and eating me, so I can't muck out or do anything. Help, help! Oh, my God. Oops, it is. Um, that's meant to go in the wheelbarrow. Right, nothing happened, OK? You agree? You agree, Betty? Housework is not the girl's strong point, particularly 1940s style. <coughs> the dust's coming off, but I prefer to hoover that any day. And most of their efforts have so far failed to impress Auntie Sue. You've done six pairs of Wellingtons in the time it's taken everybody else to get halfway through their ha rooms. Right. Move on, get a move on. A couple of them, the way they're going on, certainly won't be going. Um, I just thought they were putting no enthusiasm into it at all. I thought I'd go and get the boys moving. It's a lovely morning out here, mind, isn't it, Harry? Uh -huh. Gorgeous, perfect day for doing a uh, bit of farm work. It's a bit hard, darling. I'm sweating a lot. You're not sweating, man. There's not, you're not, you haven't even got a temperature of any sort. It's been here for ages, like now and all. Are you pleased with what you've done? Uh, yeah, we've done a really good job. Uh -huh. Are you feeling confident that the farm's tidy enough? Uh, I mean, if you, if you, if you look at this bit here, are you, are you quite happy with it? Yeah. No. I'm not. You here. are, Charlie. Not here. No. Charlie's confident, but are the girls winning their war on dirt? 
It's looking very, it's smelling very clean, Chelsea. You've been working hard. What's your job? What, the whole room? Yeah, I've got to get it all tidy. You sound out of breath. Have you been running? I've been running up there and back, <laughs> trying to beat this carpet. I've been on my back, trying to get all the dirt off. Yeah. And everyone's stepping on the carpet now, which I've just spent half an hour beating. Right, I'm going to get off your carpet now, because I'll be in real trouble if I don't. Our evacuees have spent the last two hours cleaning, grooming and mucking out. And Auntie Sue and Uncle Brian are just about to start their farm inspection. But will it be up to scratch? Hmm, it's not bad. If it isn't, they'll be missing out on all the fun at the fit. Right, clean straw, no poo. He did his best. He has, has he? Nine out of ten. What did I get? Ten. You actually got ten. Wait. <laughs> it looks like the boys will be going to the fit. But will they be joined by the girls? It's up to Auntie Sue. Good. You haven't swept up in the corners. It's still loads and loads of gravel down there. You have not dusted that. I can write my name in there. That is disgusting. This room is perfect. Natalie has worked so hard in here. There's no, there's, there's just no dust anywhere. It smells fresh and clean. And this is how I expected the standards of all of you for the rest of the house. Tia and Joanna, you're going to finish off your chores. I want this done, otherwise you two especially will not be going to the fete. Tia and Joanna have been given one last chance to prove they deserve to join in the fun. I am actually really upset because um, I don't even know whether I'm going to be allowed to go to the fete now and I have to tidy all this up. This is not a chance, it's a punishment, man. <laughs> I've been doing this for like 10 minutes and I haven't even done half of it. After another half an hour's hard graft, have the girls done enough to satisfy Auntie Sue? Well, you've made a good effort in here. Thank you. Thank you, well done. Thank you. All right, good girl. And you can go to the fete, all right? Thank you. Good girl. That is excellent. Can you see how nice and shiny and everything it is through? Well done, I'm really proud. You've sort of put a bit of effort into it and taken some pride in it. And you can go to the fete. Um, I don't really want to anymore. Don't you? Why is that? Because you've had to put a bit of hard work into it. You don't feel very well. No. I think you've just got the miseries. Everybody, all the girls, have had to make a real effort this morning. And you included, all right? So you are going to go to the fete and you're going to enjoy yourself. OK? So do you want to come and help put the cakes and things out? Yeah. Good girl. Come on. The rivets don't just want their farm sparkling clean. The evacuees have to be polished to perfection, too. Well, you're putting your best clothes on. These are my yeah. best clothes. You I think... You I think... I've clothes, cos I've had to wear these trousers, cos I don't know why. Well, you look a bit of a scruff. Have you not got a clean shirt or...? This was clean today, but Charlie swept all mud. Right, well, we'll give you a brush and you can go and get yourself brushed off outside. This is my first time wearing this dress dress. So I just feel really clean in this dress and happy. This is actually a nice dress for once. The other one's hideous. But not all the girls are as pleased with their best dresses as Chelsea. I feel like a baby doll. Honest... Yeah, I just well, don't like it. I lost my shoes. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just the cuts all wrong, the colours are all wrong, and I... These sleeves, get a load of that. Puffy, puffy. The first person to say, "Ah, oh, you look sweet, is going to get throttled. Back in Wales, Joanna is obsessed with Joanna. I don't want to seem conceited or anything, but I'm wonderful. Looking this good is hard work, you know. Joe sometimes can be quite vain. If I walk past a mirror or a shop window or anything that gives me a reflection, then it's impossible for me not to look at it. When I'm older, I'd like to be a professional actress. The idea of people applauding me on stage and throwing flowers and chocolates is a wonderful concept. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. I don't I feel pretty at all. <laughs> <laughs> With just minutes to go before the opening of the fete, Everyone is busy putting the finishing touches to the stalls. 
all except the boys, that is. The villagers are beginning to arrive, and they haven't even set up yet. They are all completely disorganised and they've left everything to the last minute. So, um, they've still got everything to set up and it's a bit mad. We need to go get the sacks. <coughs> Come on, boys. Luke, what, what else do you sacks need? Sacks are here, we got the going? sacks. Have some money. It's three in a row, Mr Rivet. If you get three things the same, you get a prize. <laughs> Wait, wake up at the end, Richard! <laughs> Oh, see, it mucks up. We've got to do it again. It's already low. All right. right, quickly, oh, yeah. time. The girls are going to win hands down, and without a doubt, they are, because the boys are useless, and the girls have got loads of different stalls, and these are interesting stalls, so we're really, really going to win this. I think the girls seem really confident, so that's uh, quite nerve-wracking for us. But I think um, we might do work okay. here. I think, I think we might win. If, if we just have confidence, we might do it, you know. The crowds have gathered. The stalls are in place. Time for the local bigwig to open the fete. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm delighted to be invited here to open this fete this afternoon. And uh, I shall cut this ribbon now. It's a typical 1940s village fete, complete with Splat the Rat and my old favourite, Welly Wanging. Oh, it's not easy. Close. Thanks very much. Okay. My pleasure, thanks. Oh. But all eyes are on the evacuees' stalls. Would you like a good goal? Three in a row, you can win. Right. <laughs> <laughs> The boys are off to a cracking start with their human fruit machine. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 Nearly. Try your chance. You get all free. You get double your money back and a prize. Luke, it's good spiel. I'll come Josh, down. Go yes, how are we? Oh, Charlie. You can do it. Next year, you might be a millionaire. Oh, is that the line? Right, good. <laughs> what, so I stand. Oh, yes, Felix, of course. Pull the lever. You ready, lads? Here we go. Come on! Make me a winner! Ding, ding, ding! Oh! That was close. Let's have a look and see how much money you've got so far. Look at all of that in there! It's great! The boys might be pulling in the pennies, but the girls' cakes are selling like, well, hot cakes. Lovely, thank you very much. Thank you. And the girls have introduced a new money spinner. Guess the weight of the cake. I'd say three pounds. Even Tia is getting into the swing of it. You've got loads of money in there. You're doing very well. Thank you. I Are think... the boys doing better, though? Um, they've got a bigger bulb. Is this, is this your chamber pot? It, it is, <laughs> but it has never been used before. Never. Ah. In all its short life. I'm going to put another one in, because I'm going to have... Uh, Thank you. Some, yeah. Let's have a try. Very nice. <laughs> How is it? Mm. That's great. That's really good. Really nice. Pleased to hear it. Mm. Entrepreneur Chelsea has created a human jukebox to bring in even more pennies for the girls. Do you like a song? I love a song. And on the farm he had some pigs. E-I-E-I-O. They went oink, oink, oink. Back home, Chelsea is a karaoke queen. Oink, oink, oink. I love singing. I, there's no question about it. I just love singing. I'm a quite good singer. I'm very good at Anastasia. I could be a pop star one day, no question about it. My grandmother called up the stars in your eyes, but I never got through, sadly. It's going brilliant. I've already got four, four pennies. Yes, Luke. Have coffee cake finished? Yeah, I'll have a one out. Have a one, please. Thank coffee you. Cake, hold on. I'm still beating you, by the way. So. That's all right. You carry on. You might think you're beating us, but believe me, we are beating you. Greedy Luke has played right into the hands of the opposition. Hey. Have you been giving those girls pennies? What about them? Well, there's no point giving them money. 
Sensing victory slipping away, Mr. Patrick and Uncle Brian make a last-ditch attempt to help the boys. You boys will call in the people to throw the sponges. He's kindly agreed that we can have the money for our war effort against the girls. OK. All right? But who's going to get thrown at? at? Me. No, Mr. Ribbit and me. Throw sponges at these two gentlemen here! Who doesn't love throw the sponge? This should pull in the crowds. <laughs> You'll be sweeping the yard, my man. And even though it's a penny in the boys' pot, Auntie Sue can't resist throwing a wet sponge or two at Uncle Brian. No, no. The wet sponge stall has given the boys new hope of coming out on top. Because <laughs> we got two stalls now, a lot of people have come to us. I haven't seen a lot go to them, so I think we've won. I reckon we're beating the girls by mm. lots. The girls' store's gone really well. I'm so proud of them. We've almost sold out of cakes. We've made quite a bit of money on getting the waste of the Victoria sandwich cake, so I think they're going to win. After a hard-fought battle between the boys and girls, the moment of truth is approaching. Time to tot up the takings. Well, been each cake. Oh, right, three. Natalie and Luke will announce the grand total for the girls' and boys' stalls. Come on, Luke. 13 shillings, who pens hate me. And exactly at 11 shillings. Yeah! Wow, that's an extra 32 and a half pennies for the girls. The girls will be the safe to where we put the most hard work into it. Um, they had 11 shillings and we had 13 shillings and 8 pence patiently, so we beat them by over 2 shillings. If they'd have only had one stall, I think we'd have beat them. I think it's gone really, really well. Um, I think everybody's been really excited, and the girls especially, because they've, they've won, they raised the most money. And, um, but I think on the whole it's been a really good turnout and a really good effort by everybody. Well, that's it. The fete is almost over. Everybody here at Castle Farmers had a brilliant time. And look, city children, country dancing. It's great.